Welcome here to Talk SCB and welcome back here to the channel guys for another video and today once again we are going to be discussing Ernesto Valverde in the Ernesto Valverde debate because just like the first one guys if you haven't seen part one please do go and have a look at that and then come on to part two but as you saw in part one guys it really is a debate it's about opinions it's about how we judge success it's about what we really class as the football that we want to see and it's all about your own personal opinion I'm not going to come here and like I said in the first episode you know I'm not going to say what I'm saying is a gospel you don't have to take everything I'm saying as your own you're going to make your own opinions you're going to make your own conclusions and once again today we are going to be discussing Valverde his future at Barcelona whether or not he is going to remain at Barcelona and if he does what we can expect from him next season following that Copa del Rey final performance against Sevilla on the weekend which I think has actually given us more questions than answers a lot of things now we're going to have to say going forward is that what we're going to be seeing or was that a one-off we're going to be discussing all of that and more in today's video, let's do this. So first of all, guys, let me make absolutely clear that I think right now Valverde will continue at Barcelona next season. Everything looks set up to do that. You did very well in the Copa del Rey final, of course. The board actually leaked before that game that if we didn't win the Copa del Rey, he would likely be fired at the end of the season. I found that pretty hard to believe they were judging everything on a Copa del Rey final. You know, the Copa obviously an important trophy, but not really up there with the league and the Champions League. Apparently Valverde was actually unhappy with the board because of that kind of ultimatum and he was actually considering his future at Barcelona. That was a Madrid paper who reported that earlier on, though. Sport and MD both saying that Valverde happy at Barcelona. He believes that he's done a very good job. The board believe that he's done a good job, and he will very likely be here for the Barcelona team next season. So with that in mind, it is only right that we discuss the final, of course, against Sevilla, which we cannot deny was an outstanding performance. That was exactly what you've come to expect from Barcelona. Everything about that performance was fantastic. Every single aspect of it, the result, the performance, the way that it was in a final, the way the players played, the goals, the play, it was outstanding. And I think Valverde deserves credit for that. But what we have to say is, though, why have we not seen that more often this season? Why did we not see even, say, 10% of that performance in Rome in the Champions League? We needed that kind of intensity. We needed that kind of urgency against Roma. And we didn't see it. Now, are we going to say about Valverde, everything now is looking good again because of that one game? Probably not. Should we then say that Valverde is all bad because of that one Roma defeat? Probably not. But what I would say about the two performances, very, very contrasting displays. Did we see the performance against Roma come? Coming. Yes, we did. I think we've all admitted that in the lead-up to the Roma game, it was poor. We were playing badly. The players looked tired. There was no action at all from Valverde, no real insistence on changing anything, and then Rome happened. What then happened against Sevilla? Did we see that coming? Probably not. What we did see in the lead-up to that game, though, we did see rotation against Celta. Now, clearly Valverde changed there. He rotated the players for the Copa del Rey final, and it worked. In the Copa del Rey final, he then went on an attacking approach. He went out, and he went to get Sevilla, and it worked. Should we then say that maybe Valverde is changing his ways? Is he going to change his methods going into next season? I'm honestly not sure about that. That is the big question for me. Because when you're talking about Valverde and when you're talking about the squad and what he's done this season, what he's won, the results that we've had, most of the results, the performances, haven't been great. But the results have been very good. We've got two silverware in our cabinet. That's really important. And you have to say in general, he's done a very decent job. On the face of it, he's done a good job at Barcelona. He can leave if he was to leave with his head held very high. But going into the next season... Is he going to change that? Is he going to become a different kind of coach? Is he going to play on the front foot? Is he going to play the Barcelona style of play? Is he really going to unlock that potential with the likes of Usman Dembele? Are we going to see him use those youth players? Will he start to use Barcelona B? There are a lot of changes I think that Valverde needs to make in order to really endear himself, I think, to the Barcelona fans. I think right now we're all saying, you know, Valverde's done a decent job. He's a decent guy. Nothing wrong with him at all in terms of the person that he is. But I think we just need a little bit more to fall in love with the guy. I don't think he's done enough so far that we can say, we love this Barca. We love the way that what Valverde's doing. Because I just don't think that's true. I think the performance against Sevilla, I would love that if it was a sign of things to come. I really, really would. But there are deeper things that you look into in that game as well. For instance, 
Was we incredible or was Sevilla very poor on the night? I actually think that it was a measure of both. I don't think you can take anything away from the way that we played because I think we were electric. I think Iniesta played like he was 26. Lionel Messi was fantastic. Luis Suarez played like he was 26. Coutinho fitted in really well. The defence was solid. Everything about our game was perfect on that night. On the flip side, everything about Sevilla was shambolic, as we have seen right throughout the season in games like this. There have been times where they've conceded four five, six goals. Their defence has been very, very poor. And I think they helped us. I think they helped us play well. They came at us. They played a high line. They played into our hands. But what we did was really expose that. And like I say, take nothing away from our performance. It was absolutely brilliant. But then, you know, looking towards the future, are we going to be able to replicate that kind of display against other opposition? That also remains to be seen. How Valverde is going to approach the season, we just really don't know. We don't know what his plan is for Barcelona. Is his plan now to go back to 4-4-2? Does he want to play 4-3-3? Is he going to continue playing on the front foot? Because that was the big thing against Sevilla for me. It wasn't all about the performance. It wasn't the fact that, you know, Sevilla might have been bad. It was about the way that we approached the game, the way that we set ourselves up, and the way that we said, we're in this final, and we're going to win it. We're not going to just about play. We're not going to just about get over the line. We're going to go out there, and we're going to dominate this football match, and win it in the best way possible. And that's exactly what we did. We didn't set up thinking about, oh, you know, Jesus Navas and Sarabia are on that right-hand side for Sevilla. That could be a problem. Maybe if we play somebody over that left-hand side, we can contain them, and then that'll stop their threat. We didn't play like that. Against Roma, Valverde did that. He was worried about Kolarov. He was worried about Perotti. We played two full-backs at the camp now in a Champions League quarter-final match. That is not acceptable. What we did against Sevilla was being bold, being brave, acting on the front foot, and being attack-minded. That is what we want to see from Barcelona. And look, if Valverde changes his ways, if next season we see a in football, if we see him put that faith in youth, if we see him integrate one of our record signings, Dembele, into the team, then everything will be a lot better and people will hold their hands up and I'll say, you know what, Valverde's doing a good job. But in order to succeed here, he does need to change. I think he recognises that. I think we all recognise that. This season has been good. It's been solid. We've had a very solid base to build on. But in his second season now, if he does stay, we need to see development. We need to see him take all this to the new level to really be a success here for me. And there have been a lot of questions as well about the squad that he has at his disposal at Barcelona. Is he dealing right now with an average squad? I saw somebody say that Valverde was doing very, very well because he had a mid-table squad and he was winning titles with it. I think we, we need to sort of stray away from that. We can't give Valverde the excuse of the squad that he has. When you have players like Lionel Messi in your team, you should be expected to at least challenge, and that's exactly what we've done. He's got Iniesta. He's had Luis Suarez. He's got Coutinho. He brought in Dembele and Coutinho, nearly 300 million worth of talent right there. Now, a lot of people will say... You know, he lost Neymar. He's dealt with that very, very well. And I agree. He's made us more rounded without Neymar. We're not so solely dependent on our front three. But I still think we're solely dependent on Messi. And I still think we're solely dependent on Suarez. I think there's not a lot of goals coming from elsewhere in the squad. We did become a bit more balanced defensively and across midfield. But a lot of people as well will say that we're actually a better team now without Neymar. And that Neymar leaving was a good thing. Now, you can't have that both ways. Either Neymar was a very good player here and we would do better with him in the team or we're better without him, but then you can't really use that as an excuse for Valverde. If we're better without Neymar, Valverde has it better. Luis Enrique, we know that he utilised the front three to be electric. All the focus was on the front three because it was the best we'd ever seen. Without Neymar now, Valverde maybe has put more focus on the midfield. I wouldn't really say we dominated every game that we've played in. A lot of the times it has been a 50-50 battle. You look at the game against Roma, where we were very, very deep in the field. So I think there's still a lot of work to be done, but I think Valverde is not hated. I don't want other people from other clubs thinking that we absolutely despise Valverde. The Champions League was a massive embarrassment, but it was one game. I think we all saw that coming. I think there was things in the lead-up that he could have done to go about that game differently, but we know all about that. Now we've got to move on. If Valverde is here next season, we will be behind him. We'll be behind the club. We'll be behind the team. We want them to win every game like we always do. But like I say, if Valverde is going to be a success here, he does need to change. We can't sit here next season, right throughout the season, watching the same football, watching the same mistakes 
mistakes, watching Valverde once again not rotate his side. Because there are players in there, even if you say our squad isn't good, there are still players in that team right now that you can rotate. You look at Stillerson's performance in the last game there, again, the Copa del Rey final. We've got two of the best keepers in the world right now. We've got Ter Stegen, who's outstanding, and Stillerson, who's one of the best backups the world has seen. Really, really is outstanding. You look at right back, we've got Sergio Roberto and Nelson Semedo, two very, very good right backs. At left back, we can improve on. Digne hasn't been good enough this season. Alba has not had enough support, but then he hasn't looked at Barcelona B to try and fill that gap. Same sort of depth at centre-back. You've got Yerry Mina, who was brought in in January. Valverde has hardly even looked at since he came in. You've got Thomas Amala, who's a very, very solid player, alongside Gerard Piquet and also Samuel M. So good depth there in the centre-back department. In midfield, I think we need work. I think we certainly need work in that midfield. Somebody like Paulinho was brought in. Valverde, though, would have sanctioned that move. He didn't add anybody else to his squad in the summer in terms of midfield area. We've got Andre Gomez, who I don't think has done well enough. Danny Suarez, no real faith has been shown from Valverde and Danny Suarez. Then you've got players like Iniesta, the right edge, Sergio Busquets, of course, who he's used a lot throughout the season. Then there's players like Alex Vidal, who can sort of slot in anywhere. But I understand there, the depth isn't as good as it can be. And then you've got the strikers role, and the midfield there, and the wingers. And I think there's a really, really good depth in that forward line. You look at Messi, you look at Suarez, you look at Coutinho, you look at Dembele. There is a lot of depth there. I don't think Valverde can hide behind the fact that we haven't got a good squad. We've got a very, very decent squad here. There are a few additions that we need to make, but when we make those, it's an outstanding squad. It really, really is. So I don't think we can complain about the quality of the players that we have. We should have seen more rotation. There wasn't any excuse whatsoever not to rotate before the Roma game. We saw it against Celta. Those players got through the game at a very, very tough ground and still continued our unbeaten run. So there was no real excuse not to rotate ahead of Roma. Valverde, though, has he learned his lessons? That is the key in all of this. If he's learned, if he's going to involve as a manager, if he's going to change his ways, because you look at Luis Enrique. When he came into Barcelona, he wanted to be the boss. He wanted to rule everything. He wanted to control everything. And by January, after that Real Sociedad loss, very embarrassing again, he learned from that. He learned from that. He changed his management style completely. He changed his approach to key players. And we were all the more successful for it in that season. Will Valverde now do the same sort of thing? Will he change the way that he manages? Will he rotate more? Will he look more to the youth team? Will he try to play more attack-minded football? Will he change his philosophy in some ways? We will have to wait and see whether Valverde is going to make those changes. But I think we all have to accept now that he probably will be here come next season. And we will have to get behind him. We won't have to accept everything. We will still criticise if there is room to criticise. But at the same time, we want Barcelona to win. And it's going to be really interesting now what Valverde does in the summer, who he brings in, what kind of players he sees in his team. And most importantly, how is he going to set up next season in his approach? Will we go for it? Or will we still be conservative like we've seen for most of the season? So those are just some of the thoughts that I had after the Copa del Rey final and building on that now, look into the end of the season. It's going to be really, really interesting, I think, in how Valverde approaches El Clasico because at the time, not much will be there to play for. But at the same time, we want to see us go into the game with that same sort of approach. Go and get Real Madrid. It's at the camp now. Take the initiative. Take the lead role and go and beat Real. And because we know we can do it. So leave your thoughts down below, guys. What do you think about Valverde now? Now, has anything changed? Should we not base things off one game? Should we look to the future and think Valverde will change his ways? Do you think he will? And do you think he deserves to remain here beyond the end of the season? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. And I will, as always, see you for more videos very soon. But until then, as always, Vesca El Barça. Yeah.